Today we're going to talk about the socket runtime. The runtime for building native apps for desktop and mobile using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We use NPM to install the socket runtime. It doesn't require Node, but since most web developers are familiar with it, it's a good place to start. We'll create a working directory, and then in it, we'll use the create socket app to create some basic boilerplate so we can get started quickly. This should be familiar to most web developers. We'll open up our favorite editor, we'll go into the source directory, and we can see there's a basic CSS reset, an HTML file, and a JavaScript file. In the JavaScript file, there's a DOM content loaded event, which detects the operating system, and then after a short timeout, displays it to the user. There's also a config file. And in the config file, we'll give the application a unique ID, we'll save it, we'll quit, and then we'll run the basic boilerplate that was created by the NPM module. There we are. And we can see after the short timeout, the operating system, and we have our new native application. We can close it, and we can open up our favorite editor again, and we can make the application do something a little bit more interesting. So we'll go back into the source code and we'll edit the JavaScript file and we'll remove some of the boilerplate code that was created and we'll add back some more interesting code to do something more sophisticated. We'll add the peer-to-peer -peer module that ships with the socket API. When DOM content loaded event fires, we'll create a peer and that peer can listen and talk to other peers on the network from the application, those who subscribe to the same topic ID. And each peer will have a unique ID. And when it receives data, the on data event will be fired. Each peer will get initialized and it will start listening for connections. When we click on the application, we want to do something. We want to create a random color. When the random color is created, we want to publish it to the peer-to-peer -peer network as a message. So in the case, we'll call the uh, publish method and we'll set the color of the document locally. When we receive a message, we want to obfuscate the IP address slightly and we also want to set the color of the document. And then we need to create the set color method and then we can save this and then we can quit and we can build it. Socket will try to use numerous methods to connect with other peers. We can see when we click on it, it changes color but there are no other peers to connect to. So let's create a mobile app and let's try to connect to that. So first we have to add some uh, basic information to the configuration file so that we're able to load the application onto the device. And in this case, since we're building it for iOS, we'll take some of, some of the configuration information and add it. And all of this is documented in the getting started guides. After we've added it, we can save this and we can go to the command line and run the SSE command again to build the mobile application, specifying dash C for code signing and dash P for packaging. After it builds, then we can run the SSE command again to install the application. And since it's slightly difficult to run these side by side, we'll switch to a third device so we can see the desktop and the mobile application together as it's installed. Here's the desktop, we run the command, and then here's the application being installed on the device. When it opens, it's gonna to try to use all of the methods that it understands to be able to connect to other devices that it finds on the network. And then we can see the devices are communicating with each other. When I tap the screen on one, changes the color on the other.